Hello and welcome to Cooking with Terror. This is the maiden voyage of this program and the purpose of the program is to ideally help you to find your happy place in the kitchen because everyone who knows me and has seen me cook knows that the kitchen is my happy place. We're gonna do that by talking about three things in each of these shows, tools, techniques, and ingredients. I think if you know your tools, you know your techniques, and you know your ingredients, you become you develop the freedom to create in the kitchen and it makes you a much more comfortable cook in the kitchen. So we're going to start with something simple that apparently drives people crazy and that is eggs. And we're going to talk about poaching and hard boiling. So let's start with the, uh, the whole thing about poaching. When you poach an egg, the biggest problem that people encounter is it just blows apart when you put it in the pan. Now there are three things that you can do to prevent that. The first and foremost is to get a really fresh egg. So I'm going to demonstrate what it looks like when you put an, a, an egg that isn't fresh in the pan versus one that is really, really fresh. The second thing you can do is not vigorously boil the water. The water is not going to get any hotter once it reaches boiling temperature. So at being at a very low simmer is as hot as it needs to be. Now I know that if you watch Julia Child or somebody else uh, who goes out in the backyard and collects the chickens from the, uh, the eggs from the chicken coop and they're that fresh, they'll do things like swirl the water and the egg stays together. Most store-bought eggs are not going to be uh, able to hold together under those conditions. So we want a very still pan that's going to not disturb the egg very much during the cooking process. And the third thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of acid in the pan. And that can be in the form of some sort of citrus, or it can be a little bit of vinegar. It's whatever goes with the, uh, the finished uh, meal that you're trying to make. So sometimes I use lemon juice, sometimes I use a little white wine vinegar, uh, but a little bit of acid in the pan will help everything to hold together. So let's take a look at what happens when we put a, an egg in the pan that has not, uh, is not very fresh. And then we'll take a look at what happens when they are really fresh. All right, so I've got an egg here in the bowl and this egg is right at its, uh, what do they call it on the carton? The uh, use by date. So we're right up against the use by date. Uh, and one of the most critical things if you're going to poach an egg is to have it be really fresh. So this one by definition is not really fresh. Now I've got the water at uh, just a low, low simmer with a little bit of white vinegar, uh, white wine vinegar in it to tighten this up a little bit. We're just gonna slip the egg in here and see what happens to the albumin on an egg that is reaching its expiration date. You see the white just balloon out? See, it just doesn't hold together. And if you have a stale egg, there's just no way you can make it poach well. Uh, so this will be a well-cooked yolk and the uh, albumin, the white, will be uh, all over the place because it just can't hold together. It just doesn't have any uh, cohesion. Now the beauty of these older eggs is that the pH of an egg changes as it gets older and the adhesion between the albumin and the membrane that surrounds it, which is attached to the shell, deteriorates over time. So if you want to be able to peel a hard-boiled egg, boil older eggs, and the shell will slip right off. If you want to poach an egg, make very sure that it's as fresh as you can possibly get. Uh, now, I've purchased some that say that they have an expiration date that is almost a month away. And since uh, when they ship them to the store, the store has 30 days to sell them. These are about as fresh as you can get although the producer has the option of shipping eggs that are as much as 30 days old to begin with. So uh, this egg is probably 60 days old. The eggs that I'm going to cook to, that I hope are fresh uh, are, could be up to 30 days old already. I'm going to let this one finish cooking. There's nothing wrong with the egg. I mean, it's perfectly edible, but it's not very pretty with that uh, albumin spread out like that. And it does take a couple of minutes for these to cook. Uh, one pointer that we may as well talk about while this egg is finishing cooking is that the eggs will, uh, there's a process called carryover. Uh, when you take something off the heat, it continues to cook for a brief period of time. And so you want to pull an egg out a little bit before it's completely done. 
uh, to your desired degree of doneness. And some people like the yolk a little jammy, some people like it uh, very runny. But if you like it very runny, you're going to have to pull this while the albumin is just a little under set, and then it will continue to cook after you pull it out of the pan. You can see that is not completely set yet, but I am going to pull it at this point. All right, so if you're looking for a pretty Benedict, you'd be a little disappointed with that white spread around like that. And that's probably the most common problem that people encounter. Okay, so you saw what happened when I put that uh, egg in that uh, was reaching its expiration date and it just blew apart. Now let's take a look at what happens when I put some relatively fresh eggs in that pan. Okay, now I have what I hope are actually fresh eggs. It looks much better. I cracked one into this dish, and now I'm going to just slip it into the water and see what happens. Ah, see how it holds together. That's the key. Got to have fresh eggs. When I'm doing poached eggs, I always do an extra or two because sometimes you break them getting them out of the pan or for whatever reason you have a problem with one and you really don't want to mess with that later on. All right, so notice how those have held together beautifully. Wow. That's the secret. Fresh eggs. Okay, so the time that these will take to cook varies with the egg. It, it's going to have to do with the size of the egg. Now, let's remember that water can only get to 212 degrees. So this is right at that temperature right now. It's not boiling. It doesn't have to be boiling. Boiling doesn't make the water any hotter. It just turns it into steam. So it's right at that temperature. We're going to let them go for a little bit. Now, the other thing to keep in mind if you're poaching eggs is everything else that you're going to do with the eggs has to be done. You need to really be ready. As a matter of fact, if you're making this for guests, you probably want them sitting down before you even put the eggs in the pan. So what I've done is I've prepared some uh, shoestring sweet potato fries. Uh, I experimented with cooking those in a waffle iron this morning. Uh, it's a technique that I don't recommend unless I figure out some of the details because it worked okay, but it was a little bit of a nuisance. So we're going to put these on top of sweet potato fries and I've got those warming in the oven right now, and we'll just be able to slip these out. You can see how they're, the albumin is still a little bit loose, but remember that carryover, and I'm gonna be putting these on top of warm sweet potato fries on a warm dish. So I don't wanna let them get overdone I, we like runny yolk if you like them a little jammy. So these have been in there two minutes right now. Three is probably the upper limit of what I would do. So these are the little nests of sweet potato fries. Make a little place in the middle for them. I've been keeping them warm in the oven. And here we go. These are perfect, look at that. So again, there's a little shimmer in the white there. If you don't like that, let them go a little longer, but you're gonna lose the runniness of the yolk if you do that. As a matter of fact, within a minute or so, these are going to be a bit more cooked than we even like. So this is something that you really wanna be ready to eat. These are beautiful eggs too. These are farm fresh eggs. Look at that yolk, a gorgeous color. And let me take a little taste of this. Oh yeah, 
That is good. Okay, so now you see what a really nicely cooked poached egg looks like. Now, I did have some left over from that dozen that was reaching its expiration date, and so I thought I'd demonstrate what happens when you hard boil those eggs. Uh, the nice thing is that hard boiling a somewhat stale egg makes it very easy to peel. So let's take a look at what happens after I've boiled a couple of those eggs that are reaching the expiration date. Okay, I had two eggs left over from that dozen that I said was at the expiration date. And we tested one of those in the uh, poaching water. We know it was stale because of the way the albumin blew out. Now I'm going to test that theory that these are going to be easy to peel. I just hard boiled the two remaining ones. Now, after I hard boil, I almost always uh, shock the eggs in ice water, which I've done here. Get something to put the shells on. And that shell is coming off pretty easily. It's not sticking very much at all. And I will tell you that I did hard boil some of these when I first purchased them, and they were very difficult to peel. These are coming off really pretty easy. It's not slipping off like they show you in some videos, but it is certainly coming off without tearing the egg to pieces. All right, so there's your secret on eggs. Hard boil old ones, poach new ones. But check that expiration date while you're at the store. I found a tremendous range, I mean weeks of range, between the earliest and the latest expiration dates. So choose one that's way out there. Peeling off beautifully. Look at that. Comes right off. Okay, there's your tip for the day. Okay, so now you know how to both succeed with poached eggs and hard boiled eggs. And I hope that as a result, you're going to have a lot more fun in the kitchen and you're going to have some great meals. Uh, please hit subscribe below and you'll get every uh, one of these uh, shows as soon as they come out. And also hit like and that'll help other people to find this channel and maybe make their life in the kitchen a little bit easier too. So I, until the next time, uh, bon appetit.